we don't hear a thing. And so by the time he gets to be 12, they go to Jerusalem like they would normally do at the Passover. And um, so Jesus is with his friends, his buddies. I'm sure they're playing around this, that, and the other. And uh, when Joseph and Mary are looking for him, they can't find him. Can't find him anywhere. And so three days later, they find him. And it's interesting what uh, Mary said when they found him, because she said probably what uh, any mother would have said. Uh, when they saw him, they were astonished at his, and his mother said to him, son, why have you treated us this way? Now, she didn't say because he was Jesus. Oh, son, why have you treated us this way? No, she said, son, why have you treated us this way? Because she was frightened by the fact that he was uh, not there. And she said, we have been anxiously looking for you. And he said to them, well, why is it that you are looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? I'm going to come back to that verse. They did not understand this statement, which he had made to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he continued in subjection to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart. Now, even though he was who he was, he was continually obedient to his parents. Now, here's the reason why. The reason he was continually obedient to his parents, and he wasn't being disobedient when he was at the temple, because what happened was he was there, and when they found him, he was talking to all the teachers and uh, the scribes, the Pharisees, and asking them questions and answering questions, and they were talking back and forth, and so he was doing exactly what he said I'm about my father's business. He was learning, and so he went home with them, and for the next 18 years, you don't hear a thing. Now, you would think that anybody as important as Jesus, even as a teenager now, and uh, in his 20s, uh, and yet silence. 18 years of silence. Don't you know his mother must have said, well, now, and she wouldn't have said it to him, but if she just said, now, Father, if he's your son, and you have all these big plans, well, when are they going to start? Because what he was doing was watching his father and learning to be a carpenter. Well, that had nothing to do with being on the throne of David. And all the things that were implied by what the angel had said. And what's he doing? He's just being a carpenter. He comes, his hands are dirty and nails are dirty and he has to clean up like anybody else. And so this goes on. Listen, for 18 years, he's just doing what a boy would do and a young man would do. No explanation from God. He's just being what he is. And she's thinking, pondering in her heart, thinking about what the angel said, thinking about the birth, and thinking about their escape, and thinking about the temple, and thinking about what he said in the temple. In other words, think, 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 ponder in her heart. All these things she's treasured in her heart, and now she's wondering, well, you know, wonder how long this is going to last. Somewhere in this time... Joseph dies. God takes him off the scene. And I'm sure that God in his purpose knew that Joseph needed to be removed. And so it would be Jesus and his mother. Imagine how she treasured this boy. They had other brothers and sisters. Now, there are those who think that, uh, that the Virgin Mary only had Jesus. That is not true. Very clear in the Bible, they had brothers and sisters. And so, here he is now, but he's, per he's perfect. But, but what's, what's going to happen? One day, he walks into her and he says to her, Mother, my time has come, or something like that, and I'll be leaving. And don't you know when he left, what she must have thought? Because now she's had him for... 30 years, and now he's leaving. And she had to know that when he left, he would really be leaving. So when I think about all the things that she thought about, I want you to think about some things that she had to consider, some ideas, some thoughts she had that are beyond the incidences themselves. And so I'm going to give you a list of them. I'm going to put them on the board here because I want you to... Um, I want you to think about this. 
and especially as a mother, thinking about what she thought. She gave birth to the Son of God. This was not just another baby. That from her womb came the Son of God. The Son of God, that is, God who took upon himself human flesh like any other child except sinless and was born like any other child, the Son of God. Not the son of Joseph, not the son of Mary, but the son of God. And she had to be thinking about this. You know, normally I would think this is my son. This is the son of God. So she had to ponder that in her heart. A second thing was this. Think about this. Her son would be her savior. What a thought. Her son would be her savior. Because the more she listened to him probably and talked to him, the more she began to understand his mission in life. How much he told her, we do not know. But certainly he had to have told her many things to maybe prepare her for what was ahead. Maybe he kept a lot of the painful part out. A third thing was this. She had to think about this. She had to exchange her parental authority for his divine authority. That is, she had to give up her parental authority. He was God, and now his divine authority was what ruled in that household and what ruled in his life and in her life. Though the Bible says, and I didn't answer it a few moments ago, I want to answer it now, that he had to be in submission to her all the years of his life that he was with her for this reason. Think about it carefully. Why did he come? He came for the purpose of giving his life as a sacrificial offering to the Father and atonement. His death was a sacrificial death, a substitutionary death. He died in the place of all sinners, took upon him the sin debt of all mankind, laid down this life at the cross in order to become our Savior. Now watch this. In becoming our Savior... Watch this carefully. He took our guilt and our sin and gave us his righteousness. That was the exchange. He took upon himself our sin. Now, the only way he could do that is to be a perfect son, a perfect child, a perfect man. That is because, you see, he had to keep the law absolutely and perfectly. That meant he had to be in subjection uh, to his parents all the days of his life until the time came for him to walk away. 